And at number 10, Harry and Meghan are related. This should be taken with a slight grain of salt because at some point if we go back far enough, we're pretty much all related. So as we know, Meghan was born American and of course Harry is British, but they still share some DNA. The Daily Mail did a genealogical investigation where it was revealed that Harry and Meghan are cousins dating back to the 15th century. The connection is on Markle's father's side. But of course, it's 15 generations back, so there are no real connections still intact. And there's zero chance anyone will be related at family gatherings. In at number 9, always wanted to be famous. An old friend of Meghan's came forward after the engagement claiming that Meghan always wanted to be famous, even since childhood. She not only loved being the center of attention from a young age, she was very calculated in who she spent her time with. Nanaki Pretty told the Daily Mail, quote, All I can say now is I think that Meghan was calculated, very calculated in the way she handled people and relationships. She is very strategic in the way she cultivates circles of friends. Pretty also claimed that Meghan always wanted to be famous. Royal scholars have pointed out that this trait is a positive for Meghan and Harry's relationship. Apparently most of Harry's other relationships didn't work out because the women he was with did not like all the attention. But clearly this is not an issue for Meghan. Penny Jenner, author of Prince Harry, brother soldier's son, told The Express quote, One of the advantages of Meghan is because she is in the public eye, she likes that. The real problem with Harry's girlfriends in the past is that they absolutely hated the media attention that scared them off. And at number 8, Meghan cheated with Harry. After Meghan was confirmed to be dating Prince Harry, it came out that there might have been some overlap between her relationship with Harry and with her ex who was Canadian chef Corey Vitellio. Before she started dating Harry, Meghan was seen out with the chef on multiple occasions. Nobody thought anything about her past relationship until a fan noticed that Vanity Fair changed the date when Harry and Meghan started dating from May to July of 2016, because apparently she was still with the chef in May. Harry and Meghan first met at the Invictus Games in Toronto, and when Harry asked for her number, the Telegraph reported that she was still with her ex. The Daily Mail actually asked the chef about his split with Meghan, and he claimed that he and Meghan had, quote, parted permanently when Harry came on scene. However, he did somewhat hint that the pair might have been together in some capacity while she still was with Harry. And at number seven, fame changed her. After news broke that Meghan was marrying Harry and would become a princess, Many sources came out saying that fame had changed her, and she's all about climbing the social ladder. In December of 2017, news broke that Samantha Markle, who is Meghan's estranged half-sister, was planning a tell-all book about Meghan. In an interview with The Sun, Samantha said, quote, Hollywood has changed her. I think her ambition is to become a princess. Samantha also complained that Meghan forgot about her after gaining high society status. A source close to the family told E! News that Samantha cannot be trusted. However, Samantha is not the only person who says this about Meghan. Meghan's former best friend, Nikandi Pretty, told the Daily Mail in December 2017, quote, There's Meghan before fame and Meghan after fame. And at number 6, chose career over marriage. Before Meghan was known for her role on Suits, she was actually married to a producer named Trevor Engelson for two years, before they eventually split. The split was apparently caused because of Meghan's work, and a former friend said that Meghan clearly chose her career and work over her husband. The former friend, who served as a maid of honor at Marco's wedding to Enkelson, told the Daily Mail, quote, It was such a shock when she told me they were getting divorced. Apparently, the stress of the long-distance relationship is what caused the main issue. Meghan was living in Canada at the time, filming the show Suits while her husband was in LA. Apparently, Engelson was heartbroken over the split and did not see it coming. Halfway at number 5, does not treat animals well. Meghan Markle likes to be known for her humanitarian and social efforts. One thing that Meghan is very proud of is that she adopted two dogs from a rescue shelter. But it seems that it was not happily ever after for the two puppies. After Meghan became a princess and was set to move to Kensington Palace in 2017, a spokesperson confirmed that Markle's retriever, Bogart, would not join her overseas. Apparently, Meghan felt that it was inhumane for the dog to take the long trip, along with the difficult approval process for dogs coming into the country. And Meghan left the dog with one of her friends in LA. Then later in December, Daily Mail reported that her other dog, Guy, broke both of his legs. We're not sure what the circumstances were, but apparently Meghan was quote, distraught over the accident. In at number 4, Meghan cut off her friends. After Meghan split from her ex-husband, it was said that she spent a lot of time in London. While there, she apparently formed a friendship with local TV personality Lizzie Cundy after attending an event together. Lizzie disclosed that Meghan wanted her to help finding a new man. Apparently, Meghan wanted him to be British and famous. In a 2019 tell-all, Cundy wrote about Meghan, quote, we were having a girly chat and then she said, Do you know any famous guys? I'm single and I really love English men. 
so I said, we'll go out and find you someone. Apparently Megan was interested in soccer player Ashley Cole, but it didn't go anywhere. Then Megan apparently slid into the DMs of X Factor winner Matt Cardle in 2015, but shortly after that, Cardle just stopped replying. But apparently after Harry showed some interest in Megan, Megan felt she had no need to stay in touch with Lizzie Cundy anymore and basically ghosted her. Apparently Cundy asked Megan about Harry, then they chatted for a bit, but never saw each other again. Cundy added, quote, I was literally ghosted by her. In the number three, the staff hate her. It was reported that while Megan and Harry were living in the royal palace with the other family members, the staff hated Megan so much that they started to quit. In October of 2018, a palace aide and assistant named Melissa quit because of quote, Hurricane Megan. Apparently Melissa was a longtime aide of the families and a trusted assistant, but that all changed when Megan came into the picture and annoyed the staff with her requests. Apparently Megan adopted a lot of West Coast habits like waking up at 5 a.m. and quote, bombarding aides with texts. One source told the Mirror quote, Megan put a lot of demands on her and it ended up with her in tears. Melissa is a total professional and fantastic at her job, but things came to a head and it was easier for them to both go their separate ways. Apparently Megan's tension with her staff also caused a rift between Megan and Kate. Kate apparently called out Megan for her strict and disrespectful behavior towards the staff. In at number two, inappropriate requests. On the day of Harry and Megan's wedding, Megan wanted everything to be exactly the way she liked it, which is usually what happens for normal weddings. Well, royal weddings are much different, and most of what happens is passed down for generations and become very strong traditions for the royals. Megan tried to change a lot of things around for her wedding, which people did not like. One of the most offensive requests was when Megan asked for air fresheners to be deployed in the chapel where she was. To get married. Apparently the smell inside St. George's Chapel was not good enough for her. British Insider stated it does have somewhat of a musty smell, but it is not unpleasant, and it's expected for a building that's been around since 1475. A source said that Meghan wanted the staff to go around with spray guns to make it smell better, but the request was denied. The source said, quote, Royal household staff stepped in and told her office politely but firmly that this was the Queen's Chapel and it simply wasn't appropriate. I don't believe a request of that nature has ever been made before. And finally at number one, Meghan knew she wouldn't stay royal. The exit of Harry and Meghan from the royal family was devastating news to many. But after further investigation, it seems that Meghan might have known she was not going to be a royal for long. And she might have even concocted this scheme to get the most amount of press possible, then to leave the royal family and go back to Hollywood, where she's always wanted to be. When it was announced that the royals would be leaving, everyone blamed the decision on Meghan, as she was the only change in the family before Harry's formal exit. British columnists said that they think Meghan did not know the difference between being a celebrity and being a royal. Canadian millionaire Kevin O'Leary even slammed Meghan, saying she was the reason that nobody cares about the couple anymore. Quote, I think Megan got him into a bad place, and maybe she should do a little soul searching. She knew what she was getting into when she married him. Page Six also reported that Megan put some clothes in a storage location in Canada before she got married. She then decided to keep them in Canada, and they were sent to the couple's new Vancouver home after the Megxit announcement. Maybe Megan left them there because she knew she would be coming back. At number 10, Rock Hudson. Imagine taking one of the biggest secrets about who you really are to your grave. That's essentially what happened with famed Hollywood actor Rock Hudson. Rock was one of the hottest leading males in Hollywood in his heyday, but he lived with a huge secret for his whole life, and people didn't end up finding out about it until after his passing. When Rock passed away in 1985, it was revealed that he had died from AIDS. He became one of the first and most famous Hollywood celebrities to pass away from the illness. Because the illness was so heavily associated with being gay, speculation began to float around saying that Rock had been hiding his sexuality from the public this whole time. This all turned out to be 100% true as friends and family of Rock confirmed what the public had been thinking in a biography on the actor. In the book, it was revealed that he had an ex-boyfriend named Lee Garlington and he was described as Rock's true love. Rock's secret was really only known by his closest friends and family and an inner circle of Hollywood and a lot of them fought to keep his sexuality a secret in order to present Serve his career. I couldn't imagine how tough it would be to have to keep such a big part of who you are a secret from the world. At number 9, David Cassidy. Oftentimes we try our best to be open and honest with our struggles in life, but for some it's hard to share some of the things that you might not be too proud of. This is what caused actor David Cassidy to keep a pretty big secret from the public that wasn't actually revealed until after he passed away. Before he passed away, David shared with the public his struggles with dementia. Fans believed that the actor was suffering from the disease and so when news broke of his death, people just assumed that it was the dementia that ultimately took him. But it wasn't until the 
documentary about the actor called David Cassidy, The Last Session came out that the public learned the truth about David's health. It turned out that the actor was never actually diagnosed with dementia and that this wasn't what was harming his health. Instead, it was alcohol poisoning that he was struggling with and that ultimately took his life. In the documentary, the actor admitted to everything, saying, quote, There is no sign of me having dementia at this stage in my life. It was complete alcohol poisoning, and the fact is, I lied about my drinking. End quote. One of the documentary's producers spoke out about having known about the actor's struggles before the public, where they said, quote, We didn't want to exploit him, but ultimately he was honest about what killed him, and we decided that his legacy would be best served if we shared that. End quote. Before we carry on talking about some of the juiciest celebrity secrets, why not take a brief moment to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and while you're at it, why not subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one. I number 8, Gene Wilder. When someone is diagnosed with a serious illness, it becomes a very tough and very personal decision of whether or not to tell people about it. I know people who chose to keep their illness a secret until the end, and this is exactly what actor Gene Wilder did. Gene passed away in 2016, but it wasn't until after he died that the public learned about the secret that he was keeping in regards to his health. It turned out that the actor had been battling Alzheimer's for over 3 years before he passed away. After learning this, a lot of people wanted to know why this news was kept secret from the public and the reason behind it is so touching. Gene didn't reveal his condition to the public because he wanted people to remember him as he was and not someone who was sick. He wanted to keep the smiles on the faces of his fans. In a statement released by Gene's family, they elaborated on the situation saying, quote, "The decision to wait until this time to disclose his condition wasn't vanity, but more so that the countless young children that would smile or call out to him, there's Willy Wonka, would not have to be then exposed to an adult referencing illness or trouble and causing delight to travel to worry, disappointment or confusion. He simply couldn't bear the idea of one less smile in the world. End quote. At number 7, Corey Hyam. Unfortunately, as much as there's glitz and glam in Hollywood, there's also a dark side, one of those dark sides being harming and manipulating others. This is sadly something that actor Corey Hyam experienced as a child actor in Hollywood. Both he and his best friend Corey Feldman experienced the dark side of Hollywood, and though Feldman has been pretty outspoken about what he endured, Hyam on the other hand kept that top secret. The one thing that he kept absolutely hidden was the identity of the person who seriously harmed him. Him. Haim went to the grave knowing the identity of the person who harmed him, but this secret isn't completely lost as it's alleged that Corey Feldman actually knows who did it. Feldman tried in the past to get his friend to expose the person who caused him so much pain, but Haim refused because he was so scared that this individual would try and hurt them again. Haim made Corey promise that he would share the story of what happened to them if he died, and Corey did share some details, but again, the identity of the person who hurt Corey Haim remains a secret. At number 6, Sally Ride. Up next we have another celebrity who unfortunately didn't get to live their life as open as they should have been able to as they went to the grave with a huge secret. Astronaut Sally Ride was the first American woman to go to space. She became widely known for her presence in the NASA community, promoting education and interest in space, and specifically devoted much of her life to helping girls excel in STEM. She did a lot for her community, especially women and young girls, but there was another community that she was a part of that no one really knew about until after she passed away. When Sally passed away in 2012, her title grew to not only be the first American woman to go to space, but also the first astronaut to be acknowledged as gay. Sally's sexuality was never public knowledge until her obituary named a woman named Tan O'Shaughnessy as her partner of 27 years. At number 5, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston's personal life was often a hot topic in the media during her life. People were obsessed with what went on behind closed doors, the good and the bad. Though a lot of her personal life was exposed, one thing that remained a secret until her tragic passing was a horrible incident that she had endured when she was younger. After some digging and a published documentary, the world learned that Whitney was once a victim victim of inappropriate contact. After the singer passed away, her former assistant told the documentary team that Whitney had once confided in her to tell her about what she had endured when she was younger. The assistant told cameras, quote, Whitney looked at me and said, Mary, I was harmed at a young age too, but it wasn't by a man, it was a woman. She had tears in her eyes. She says, mommy doesn't know the things that we went through, end quote. Though she never spoke publicly about what happened to her, it is believed that Whitney once hinted at it in an interview when she got really emotional when talking about adults taking advantage of children. 
At number four, George Michael. Imagine being portrayed negatively in the media for basically your whole career just for the narrative to make a 180 after your passing. This is the case with singer George Michael and how his public image changed after he passed away. During his career, George was seen as scandalous and the media really dug into this while he was alive, but after he passed away in 2016, the truth about who George Michael really was came out and it was a very different narrative. He took the secret of his philanthropy to his grave, but many people wished that he was around to be appreciated for giving back to the people. The public came to learn that the singer made many large donations to a wide array of charities like cancer support groups and the Terrence Higgins Trust, which is an HIV awareness group. He kept all of his donations a secret and made sure that no one receiving these donations knew that he was behind it. He was a secret angel giving back to people without receiving any credit, which just shows that this help was genuine, not just for good press. At number three, Prince. Another celebrity who was something of a secret angel of sorts was Prince. After he passed away in 2016, secrets about the singer started to come out, some of those secrets being about his philanthropy. One person, an environmentalist who worked for the Green Jobs Act, came forward to talk about one of the donations that they had once received anonymously from Prince, where they said that they received a check for $50,000. At first, they sent the check back because it was so out of the blue and they didn't really trust it. But to their surprise, the check came back again this time with a phone call. The environmentalist then went on to say that the person on the phone said, quote, I cannot tell you who the money is coming from, but his favorite color is purple, end quote. On top of this anonymous donation, Prince also co-founded an educational effort to help teach minority youths technology called hashtag yes we code, and he also made a donation to the family of Trayvon Martin. Speaking out about Prince's philanthropy, his ex-wife said that he never wanted to make these donations public so as to not overshadow the charity or the case. At number two, Anthony Perkins. Known for his role as Norman Bates in the Hitchcock film Psycho, actor Anthony Perkins lived a pretty quiet and private life, but he also took a very big secret to his grave. When news broke of his passing in 1992, it came as a sudden shock to people. But what the public didn't know at the time was that Anthony had been secretly battling a serious illness that he kept from the public. For two years before his passing, the actor had been secretly receiving treatment for AIDS. Speaking out about her husband's treatment, Anthony's wife told sources, quote, he went twice to stay at a hospital and once as an outpatient and we went under another name. You think that this man has spent his entire life giving people so much pleasure in show business and this is his reward. He can't even be himself at the end." End quote. Anthony knew that when the public found out about his condition after his passing, there would be a lot of questions as to why he never publicly revealed his condition and so before he died, he wrote a statement to be read once he passed on. In the statement, the actor wrote, quote, I chose not to go public about having AIDS because to misquote Casablanca, I'm not much at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of one old actor doesn't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world." End quote. And finally, at number one, Billy Tipton. Billy Tipton was a famous jazz musician who kept a huge secret from everyone. This secret was so hush-hush that not even his closest friends or family knew. Billy had a pretty solid career in the beginning. The 40s and 50s were Billy's time to shine, rising to fame, and taking American jazz by storm. Billy his career started to decline, however, after he declined an offer for a recording contract and to open for Liberace. After that, the musician started to fade out of the spotlight. Over the course of his life, Billy was married five times, adopted three kids, and was considered to be a real family man. But one day, when Billy suddenly collapsed, his secret was revealed. While paramedics were trying to save him, it was discovered that Billy wasn't biologically male. Like I mentioned before, no one knew, literally no one, so this came as a shock to everyone. It turns out that Billy dressed as a man in order to be allowed into the world of jazz. Because of this huge secret, Billy was forced to live a pretty private life in order to avoid being caught. In the number 10, Mafia Connections. Back when Hollywood first started, it was rumored that mobster Mickey Cohen ran the Hollywood underworld. Back in 1950, it was apparently a known thing that Cohen ran many organized crime units in LA. And over the years, it's been revealed that a lot of big old Hollywood stars had connections to the Mafia. Even singer Wayne Newton had a connection to the Mafia, and it almost ended up costing his life. Newton was apparently friendly with Guido Pinossi, who was a member of the Gambino crime family. But Newton claimed he had no idea that he had mob ties. Then in 1980, there was a lot of scandal around Newton and the Aladdin Hotel that was co-owned with Mafia members. Rumors swirled that Newton was talking to police behind their backs. Then Newton was put on a witness list to testify against the family, which got him a legitimate threat against his life from the Mafia. Thank God he was able to survive the ordeal. 
And at number 9, ageism. Getting older is a fact of life, but in Hollywood they want to avoid it at all costs. And specifically for women, getting older means the end of your career. It's so bad that actors even try to hide their ages, so they can play younger roles. Actress Junie Hoang sued the website Internet Movie Database for revealing her true age to fans. Actress Jessica Lange has defied this ageism and has success in her 60s, but she admits it was more difficult as she got older. She said in one interview, quote, Ageism is pervasive in this industry. It's not a level playing field. You don't often see women in their 60s playing romantic leads, yet you will see men in their 60s playing romantic leads with co-stars who are decades younger. In at number 8, fake fans. In the age of social media, followers are everything, and having tons of followers can mean the difference between getting the part or not. But sadly, a lot of these followers are not real, and it's been exposed that millions of social media followers are fake and are purchased to make it seem like the star is more popular. Some of the world's most popular celebrities are a part of this. Some of the worst offenders are Ariana Grande with 46% fake, Taylor Swift with also 46% fake, and Miley Cyrus with 45% fake. It's worth noting that the celebrity is not always responsible for the fake followers, but they usually are. In at number 7, all press is good press. We've all heard the famous saying, and it seems that celebrities don't care if they are getting good or bad press, they just want to be talked about. People might not know it's actually a PR strategy to get bad press. Sometimes the negativity helps to sell something, or it can take attention off something else. One example of this was back in 2014, when it was revealed that Kim and Kanye were going to be on the cover of Vogue. At the time, Kim was not a fashion icon, and people were outraged. Some readers even threatened to cancel their Vogue subscriptions, calling Kimmy disgraceful and inappropriate for the iconic publication. Anna Wintour ended up going forward with the cover, and it was one of the most talked about issues of all time. We're not sure if it was all for press, but the negativity definitely helped to sell magazines. In at number 6, Body Issues Looking perfect is something that all celebrities struggle with, but having the perfect figure is sadly something that the industry forces you to have to be successful. Many celebrities have come forward to share their stories of disordered eating, which was caused by Hollywood bigwigs saying that they weighed too much. Even agents and managers have told a star that they need to lose weight in order to be cast. Former child actor Raven Simone admitted on The View that she was told at age 7 Seven, while starring on The Cosby Show, that she couldn't eat certain things because she was getting too big. This experience caused her to have a lifelong struggle with food. Demi Lovato has also been open about their eating issues. Demi remembered that when they were only 3 years old, they hoped that their stomach was flat. People are now fighting back against these standards and advocating for more body positivity in Hollywood, but it's a long road ahead. Half point number 5, Scientology. Scientology is a mysterious religion that happens to have a ton of A-list celebrity followers. It's been said that the founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, used celebrities because he knew that they would attract followers to this new religion. This is also the reason that the Church of Scientology has a huge luxurious building right on Hollywood Boulevard. In the 1950s, L. Ron Hubbard created the quote, Project Celebrity, a written program that offers rewards to Scientologists who bring in some of the biggest names in Hollywood. Today, some of Hollywood's biggest stars follow Scientology, including Tom Cruise, John Travolta, and Christy Alley. Apparently, these stars are rewarded with Butler-esque employees to do anything and everything for them. Former high-ranking members spoke out against this, claiming that they saw Tom Cruise use underpaid Scientology workers for years. In at number 4, Gender Pay Gap Yet another example of Hollywood being harmful to women is the gender pay gap between men and women in movies. And unfortunately, this still exists to this day. This issue came to the forefront in 2013 when the movie American Hustle was released. The movie showcases huge movie stars, but unfortunately was exposed that the female actors received less than their male counterparts. An email hack revealed that Jennifer Lawrence and Amy Adams received two points less on the revenue sharing agreement than their male co-stars Bradley Cooper and Christian Bale, despite the fact that both actresses are A-list actors. Around the same time, Meryl Streep, the actor with the most Oscars ever, came forward to say that even she was paid less than her male co-stars. House of Cards actress Robin Wright also said that she needed to be paid as much as Kevin Spacey or she would go public against Netflix. In at number 3, Animal Cruelty When making a movie, it's imperative that nobody is hurt during the production. This includes animals, and it's common to read, quote, no animals were harmed during the making of while watching a movie. But according to many reports out of Hollywood, that's not always true, and animals are often harmed on movie sets. Some of the worst examples include the near-drowning death of a tiger during the filming of Life of 
pie, the hitting of a dog on the set of Eight Below, and the dozens of dead fish and squid that washed up on the shore over four days during filming of the Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. The second season of the HBO series Luck was actually cancelled after four horses died during the production. Apparently they were overworked because the production wanted the horse racing to look as real as possible. The people on set also ignored warnings from humane animal monitors on the set, making it clear that they didn't care about the animals. Unfortunately, this loss of life had no repercussion. In at number 2, Hollywood Fixers It's long been rumored that bigwigs in Hollywood will hire fixers to do the dirty work for them. These are basically tough guys that will swoop in and do the dirty work that these powerful people can't get caught doing themselves. This idea was brought up again because of the series Ray Donovan. Back in the days of old Hollywood, where stars would sign their lives away to movie studios, it was common to have these fixers to deal with personal issues. It was rumored that these men would cover up pregnancies of their young stars, along with making accusations against powerful men go away. And these practices still happen today. A fixer named Anthony Pelicano was arrested after it was discovered that he sent threatening notes to celebrities along with a dead fish. Pelicano was allegedly employed by stars such as Michael Jackson, Chris Rock, Kevin Costner, and Steven Spielberg. And finally at number 1, The Illuminati The Illuminati might be the most elusive group in Hollywood. Nobody is quite sure who they are, but everyone is pretty sure that some of the top celebrities in the world are a part of it. Most notably Beyonce, Jay-Z, Tom Hanks, and Lady Gaga. The subject of the Illuminati was brought to light again recently after David Dobrik did a podcast interview where he spoke about his experience with the Illuminati in Hollywood. He told the story to Zayn and Heath on their podcast, where David revealed that a girl that he knew was approached by the Illuminati and she was told she needed to sacrifice someone to them if she wanted to get famous. Apparently, this girl called her mother, who was okay to be the one sacrificed, but the girl did not end up going through with it. Months later, David and this girl were at a Hollywood party with old Hollywood A-listers. And when the topic of the Illuminati came up, the girl told the group about how she was approached and one of the A-listers told her not to get involved with them because the Illuminati ruined his best friend's life. Apparently, this A-lister's supposed best friend was Michael Jackson.